This is the Jolly Monkey, and I'm back. I've been away for a while, but I'm back to kick some butt in Crocodile Island. And the first one who gets that reference gets a thumbs up on their comments. Anyway! Yes, today I've started a new playthrough. Obviously a Donkey Kong based one. And this time, it's Donkey Kong Country 2 for the Game Boy Advance. Yes, this opening sequence is quite tedious. You can hold A to speed up, have the flags going up and down, but frankly, even then, it takes slightly too long. Anyway, Donkey Kong Country 2. I was originally going to start with Donkey Kong Country, but like I said, there was a glitch in the cart, so here we are. Described by many as the best platforming game of all time, but I'm not sure what to say to that, but it is definitely one of the best DK platformers ever. And... Yes, you'll be entering my name here. Well, just the initials. Obviously, you can't fit the Germany Monkey into a free letter space. Now, I'm doing the Game Boy version because, well, I don't have Dazzle still, and this is the best way to do it. And I'll be able to comment on the differences between this and the Super Nintendo version. And the first thing you'll instantly notice is that there's this cutscene. Which is basically a visual representation of the story that comes in the manuals. Now, I have mixed feelings about this. Because I loved the story in the Donkey Kong Country 2 manual. And I kind of like that they put the um, visual... Well, I mean, uh, sorry, I really screwed up this sentence. I like that they put it in the actual game rather than just leaving it completely out of it. Because, to be honest, I like games with storylines. Uh, I know that there are some people who just absolutely despise cutscenes and all their forms, but frankly, if a game's got a good story, I'll play it, basically. And, so yeah, scenes like, like this. I had positive opinions about this cutscene when I first turned on the game. For, ne you know, for negatives, you'll see it in a bit. Now, look at this side. I make sure that DK never messes up my plans again. Again! Which means that he is rule for Donkey Kong Country. Meaning that he is not, repeat, not his brother. The first person to claim that Captain Karul is King Karul's brother gets a thumbs down comment. I'm sorry, but he is not his brother. I cannot believe that trophy description. So <sighs> anyway, enough of my fanboy whinging. No, DK is kidnapped. Yeah, that's the plot for this game. Donkey Kong has been kidnapped. I wish I could say this is the first... Well, it's the first time ever in this game. The other games, however... It happens more like... Actually, it's not the first time ever. It happened in Donkey Kong Country Jr. DK's always getting kidnapped. Anyway. Yeah, you'll soon see... The part I really dislike about these cutscenes. This bit of dialogue here, it's really simplified... From the version in the manual. Because in the manual... It's actually quite emotional heads up because everyone's basically saying, oh, it's dude, we might as well give up at this point. But this game, Cranky's the only one giving up. Diddy's basically... Is it? Diddy's basically saying, we'll do it. And everyone says, okay, we'll do... Okay, we'll all go tomorrow. And Diddy says, no, we have to do it now. So Diddy looks impatient. Whereas before, it was kind of making it out that this was the biggest moment in Diddy's life. The one time he had to stand up and Dixie was the only one defending him. I also mentioned that, the animations in this bit are terrible. They all go for their idol animations. I mean, really, in this situation where your longtime friend has been kidnapped, would you really be juggling? Really? I mean, it would, it's only just custom dramatic moments. Imagine what would happen if, if, like, during Metal Gear Solid or something, whilst Naomi's banning on and on about how terrible well, the life is. Snape gets out a few balls. Of Actually, that would make the cutscenes a lot more interesting. But anyway, enough of my weird rambling. It's time to start on Pirate Panic, the first level of Donkey Kong 2. And yes, once you're here, you get to see the traditional message. Although, interestingly, in this game, you can only view it once. Whereas in all the other games, you could see it plenty of times. But anyway... Yeah, you'll also notice that some sounds have been changed in this game. Some for the better, some for the worst. Most of them are the same, though. I've, it's basically the enemies. I'll get into more detail that when it comes. But, we're now about to reveal a secret bonus here. That involves the team-up action. This is something that was introduced in this game. Basically, by pressing... 
Oh god, I'm trying to remember which one it is. If you press R in on the Game Boy Advance's control, oh there, there we go. Thank you, bananas. If you press R, you can talk. They'll do this piggyback motion, which you can use to either throw them to reach higher places or just throw them at enemies. Nice double shot. And of course, for those of you who haven't played the Donkey Kong Country games, in which case, it's where the heck have you been? Play them. Then, yeah, those star barrels act as the midway checkpoints. And here we have the first bonus. As you can see, all you have to do is just drop down that hole the bananas and you'll get the easiest game in the world. And yes, I will be doing all of the bonuses in this playthrough. Well, okay, that was rather humiliating. Uh, I'll be doing all the bonuses in this playthrough because, well, put simply... I, I want to get into the Lost World, and the only way you can do that is to get all the coins. Now, this is Rambi. Of course, back from Donkey Kong Country. Jesus, uh, there's so much to talk about this first level. Yeah, Rambi, for, again, for those of you who haven't played Donkey Kong Country, again, where have you been? Rambi can basically destroy anything he runs into. And in this game, he got the um, special bonus of... If you hold down R, he will be able to perform what's called a supercharge, and basically, by doing that, he will run straight into a wall and break it open, which is, well, it doesn't work with all walls, but just some walls. But most of the time, Rambi will break open any wall that comes across, and then, well, put simply, hey, that can lead the way to most bonus game, or the very least to other parts of the level. And yes, we got Diddy back. One thing you can always take note of is the fact that everything will reset after you've gone through a bonus. So if you need to get back to a DK battle, then there you go. And there's the DK coins, or to give them their full title, Cranky's Hero Coins. Which kind of serve as an extra vital detail, which... Do I have time to explain it? Nope. Okay, this is the level target. It's just jump on it hard enough and you'll get a prize. And you watch this really cool animation. Well, actually, it's not that cool. To be honest, I never really thought Diddy was a good rapper. Just stick to the guitar, man. Anyway, on to the next level, Main Base Mayhem. I'm sorry I'm going incredibly quickly because it's just because I'm trying to explain everything at once. Ah, another difference between the Game Boy Advance and the um, snares here. But yeah, basically you can save any time you want now when you get to the map screen. You just press start and then, well, save game should be the first option that comes across. And there it is, Dixie's Ponytail World. Jump and then hold down B and then she becomes a helicopter. And that one move has basically made her superior to Diddy in every single way. <laughs> it's kind of sad, really. I mean, in all honesty... Although I do love this game, the one slight niggle I have about it is that it's basically kind of taken out the um, character balance. Because um, originally, um, in Donkey Kong Country, you had DK who was the slow but more powerful one, and then you had Diddy who was the weak but fast one. In this game, they're both got exactly the same amount of strength, speed, and everything else, and so... The only difference is that Diddy holds his bowels in front of him, and Dixie's got the, um... Is it ponytail well, which basically makes her better in almost every single way. There's no... Is it? There's no reason for choosing one or the other, so... I, actually, I guess you could call it a good thing, but it's something I find annoying. Ah, the cannibal. This is another way to get to bonus stages, besides the bonus barrel. If you see a cannibal, odds are there'll be a cannon later on in the stage, which will lead to a bonus game. And you may have noticed a um, slight glitch earlier on when it was fading out, and I just had to edit it. Not because I was stupid and completely failed this um, stage the first time round, oh no! But yeah, that's that bonus game done. To be honest, the majority of the bonus games are quite easy, there are some harder ones later on, but I'll be raging about those once we get to them. Those enemies down there are called cleaners. Really irritating and actually quite freaky because they have a really girlish scream as they, they slide down the ropes. 
which biz bizarrely they did take out, which actually, it's not just bizarrely, it's unfortunately. I That actually creeped me out. I mean, I never understood what gender they were supposed to be. But never mind. Anyway, this is the first of the Collect the Stars bonus games. And yeah, this one's pretty simple to do once you know how. Oh, and for those of you who think Ricky was first introduced here, it actually wasn't. It was introduced in Donkey Kong Land, which um, was actually quite an underrated game. I'll probably do, do that game after I've done this. And, oh, I love this. Air guitar! Sorry, sorry, I just love that pose. Anyway, I'm running out of time, so join me next time.